night everyone welcome back to my channel um thank you all for coming on or we'll watch let's see instagram is okay youtube is good let's go okay. all right so welcome to inspirational connection tv where we share talk connect about all the things that inspires motivates encourages and builds confidence in this video tonight, we're going to talk about nothing else but a mother's love, a mother's love. It's Mother's Day on Sunday, and that is a topic for tonight. So I want you all to stay tuned to share in the conversation, okay? So thank you so much for watching ICTV Live. If you don't know who I am and we have never met before, I am Samantha of Inspired by Samantha Matthews Brand. And it is a lifestyle brand that promotes inspiration, motivation, confidence, and love. And that is the brand that inspired this channel, um, the Inspirational Connection TV. So I want you to please drop a comment down below, whether you're on Instagram or on YouTube, like and share this video. And also, if you would like to get more inspirational and motivational videos, do not forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notification bell so you will not miss an upload or a live stream. And you will also help support my channel. And I just want to take a moment and thank everyone that's already subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate everyone that has done so. And if you have not yet, I will encourage you to subscribe to my channel 
it will, you will get all the motivational um, and inspirational things that you need. And I'm just going to give some confetti and a round of applause for all my viewers that have already subscribed to the channel. Thank you all so much. And if you're not seeing this on IG, go check it out on YouTube. I got confetti dropping just for you guys, okay? So we're gonna jump right on into the word of affirmation. But you all know I do start my lives every time with a word of affirmation. Affirmation that, you know, they are positive. These words are positive um, and essential for our daily lives. And using words of affirmation, they are powerful ways to command positivity in your life. Right? You want to be successful. You want to have um, a, de a good degree. Using these words will be so much bring so much power into your life when you use them daily so we're just going to go ahead and go into the jar and we're going to pull the affirmation for tonight and we'll see what it is today okay so basically it comes in a jar like this and i have these on my website we'll talk about that a little bit later and you basically just go in and you pull one out and i'm just going to go in the bottom and pull it out okay and and we'll read it and we'll see what tonight's affirmation is okay so tonight's affirmation says, I am grateful. I am grateful. So if you're at a place where you feel like you don't have, you know, you're complaining, you have certain things. Right now it's COVID, right? And a lot of us are still breathing and walking around. We should be grateful that we still have health. We are still able to work. We're still able to do the things that we're doing. So if you command that throughout your day, I am grateful. I am grateful for the things that I have. And the Lord will bless you with more once you are satisfied and you're grateful with the things that he has given you okay so i want you to look yourself in the mirror right and you pull that card out and he says i am grateful above everything else i am grateful you want to speak it over yourself okay you want to speak it with power and command it throughout your day now this is a unique product in that it encourages us right and it builds self-confidence and that is what you'll get when you use words of affirmation daily because it'll give you that confidence that you need to go through your day. Now, I want you to be sure, be sure, be sure to stick around to the end of this video for more inspirational products that is available to you as well. That'll help motivate, encourage, and build your self-confidence. Okay? So let's get straight in to another segment of Samantha's View Straight from the Heart. Now tonight, so tonight's topic is a mother's love. And just a little background about me. I am a mother of two beautiful children. They may pop in a little while, but I do have two children. I have a daughter. She is seven, and I have a son that's one. And they are both born in August, and they'll be turning eight in two this year, August 20th. And um, they are a bundle of joy to me. And how can I say the little one? How can I, I'm not going to put him out there, but the, yeah, he's a lot. The little one is a lot, okay? But I am a mother of two, and I have mothered a lot of other children, my nieces, um, cousins as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, a mother's love tonight. So I hope that this video will inspire you, and I hope that you find value in this, um, in this live tonight. So I'll go ahead and get started okay so we all know mother is an image of god right well my opinion this is straight from my heart okay mothers um is it are an image of god and it shows um how god is gentle towards us through the love of a mother not only does god love us like our mother but we experience his love in our mother's love and that's the best love that um i can correlate to um to how our father loves us right how god father loves us right now a mother's love is extremely important because it's the first love that a child feels it's the first love that they feel whether they're in that tummy when they're kicking when they're moving a mother normally right we normally move to a better position if we're laying down and we know that the baby's moving around or we can tell when they're hungry just by their movements and we do certain things at that stage Right at that stage of when they're in the womb, we do certain things to make them comfortable, to, to make sure that they're, comf they're comforted. 
and and that is that's the first love that a child will feel they know that mommy if i kick too hard mommy's going to give me something mommy's going to move mommy's going to you know do something to make me feel better so let me let me test i would say and see what my mother will do and that's the first love that a child feels okay a mother's love is also important for the health and well-being of a child as well as the emotional outcome of their children so for instance we as mothers when we get pregnant we are concerned about what we eat drinking a lot of water or we eating vegetables and sometimes we cut out certain foods we don't want to eat you know the trash or the or, or burger king or mcdonald's like we used to when we get pregnant we cut certain things out because we're concerned about the health of our child right um so a mother so that is the one of the important thing that's how you know that a mother is love their children they they start doing things differently when they find out that you know they're they'll be carrying a child um, our relationships with our mother deeply affects us and that is something that is powerful okay just to understand that one of the most powerful gifts we can give to our children is our own emotional health and i want to talk a little bit about that because a lot of times we we as parents we don't understand that whatever we go through when we are when we're raising little ones it it somehow affects them it 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 somehow um pours out into their relationship as well when they get older and we miss that because we are focused on you know they're okay they're they're whatever we do they don't see it um so the saying that i always say it's not what you say to your child that your child does is what you do to your child that's what your child does. So what you do around your child, that's what they grow up to do. So if you're telling the child, pick up the garbage, pick up the garbage, pick up the garbage, pick up the garbage. And yet you're always, there's garbage always around you. Pick up your stuff, clean up your room, and then your room is always a mess. A child is not going to understand, why is mommy telling me to clean my room when mommy's room is always messy? So we need to understand that the the we need to, whatever we do, okay, it affects our children, it affects the, the, the things that, um allow our children to grow emotionally too you know a lot of parents when they're pregnant they cry may cry a lot they may be more emotional um and that comes out on their children and that's why sometimes you know a lot of times we are counseled to to make sure that we're the doctor tells us make sure that you're comfortable you're not arguing you're not cursing you're not doing things that is going to affect that well-being of that child okay because that emotional health starts from within the womb so that's one of the most powerful thing we can do is to um, make sure that our children's emotional health is stable, okay? And um, a mother's love is nothing, is nothing like, it's like nothing else in this world. And when I was doing my research, I just, you know, just talk about what I had in mind. Um, I thought about a few things and I know Father's Day is coming up and sometimes as girls, we're always like, you know, they say um daddies are um girls are for dads and boys are for moms and uh, yeah i guess you can agree but there's some sometimes like i love my father to death okay i love my father to death and my dad it's my daddy my daddy my daddy and he calls me a nickname and if if i hear that name it's like till this day i'm old but if I hear him say that name, it, it does something to me. But a mother's love, the way you're, the way mothers love a little bit differently. Mothers, they love a little bit deeper. They give just maybe a little bit more. And not because that I'm a mom that I can say that, but they give a little bit more than a father would. And I know I'm sure um, Father's Day, I will do a segment on father's love as well because i'm not going to be biased okay um but just talking from my own growing up as a, a daughter to my mom i can give so many testimonies of how my mother has shown me that love is beyond anything else the way how she loves me she's gone above and beyond for me to be able to be here and um not, it's, it's like nothing else in this world the things that she has done for me to be able to be sitting here right now so I say that to say some mothers will go the extra, extra, extra mile for their children, right? So yes, it's Mother's Day, so we're going to talk about mom, 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 mom. And I promise you for Father's Day, I will definitely do one on, on, um, on dads as well. 
right babe so um a mother's love is both strong and gentle okay like today i had my little guy with me and he kept getting into things he kept breaking stuff tearing stuff moving things and i had to be stern on him i had to say prince stop it and then you know he'll get into that <laughs> mommy mommy and i'll have to just pick him up sometime and say okay you need to sit here and you do not need to get into any more trouble because you are getting mommy you know allow mommy to do her job and that was a perfect example i was stern on him i was strong i had a tone and I was even upset with the things that he did because he ruined a lot of things today. But I had to remember that I'm still a mom and I still have to love this little kid, even though he is like sometimes just out of this world, out of control, right? Um, another thing is moms can be loud and quiet. There are some times when I'm really soft and sometimes I like sit down with the oldest one. I have to call her name out, hey Lee, you know, just to let her know that I'm talking, I'm saying something, you have to listen. But that there are times when she comes to me, she's like, mommy, I just want to hug you. I just want to hug you. And I hold her and I said, I love you, Haley. And I have the sweet, sweetest, quiet tone. And she understands that when mommy's upset, mommy can get loud. But mommy knows also how to be gentle towards me and how to be quiet sometimes and to talk softly. Okay. A mother's love is protecting and releasing um there are some times when there are certain things that you cannot get to do with you can't get my children to do i wouldn't allow my kids to do because i'm so over i don't know if it's overprotected i'm gonna say that word but it may not be overprotecting but it's protecting i'm very protecting over them i don't let them do certain things and maybe it's a little things in the back that you know growing up as a child but i try my best to be you know to protect them from above all that i can my um my um, seven-year-old has never been into a daycare that is something that um, growing up I always said that you know if I have any children I want to be able to take care of them until it's time for them to go to, to school um, I never wanted to put them in a daycare system and my youngest as well is, is home with me and I was able to God has blessed me enough because you know you prayed about that right and I think my mother had to pray for me too um, my my thought process was whatever job that I went to school for, got my degrees, my master, my my um, associate's bachelor's, whatever degrees, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did, I had to have an opportunity to be home with my daughter. And I was able to work from home with her for five years. And I was able to teach homeschool her and everything as well. So I was able to put, have that um, control of protecting her and keeping away from be, putting her into daycare. Now I'm not knocking daycare because some parents have to do it, right? But I was blessed enough to be able to to keep her home and to um, put her in homeschooler as well. Okay, so that those are some things that just just some mothers will do extra things there's a lot of other jobs available but there was just something that i wanted to do and it was a good job in fact but i prayed about it and that was just something that god allowed me to do at that time now it's one thing um, a mother can be one thing in one moment okay and another thing in the next okay we are unique creatures okay very very unique creatures we change the things that we do changes with a child's need and also changes with a, with different children as well. What I what I used to do with my seven year old, I don't do it with my one year old. Certain things that I used to do, um, I don't do it with my one year old. I have to and people talk about this all the time. The first one, Haley couldn't do certain things. I wouldn't let her sit certain where she certain things have to be a certain way. But Prince, he comes and he just takes over. He's just gone. Eight, six, seven months he was trying to walk. By he was eight months, he was literally walking already. He wouldn't take nothing. He was just moving and going. He didn't walk till she was one years old. So there were certain things that I had to change the way how I raised them. I had to do different things. Okay, so we change with each child's needs, but what we are always there and our love is always um unmoving and unconditional. It doesn't matter what it is. We may yell a little bit louder to the oldest or a little bit softer to the youngest or vice versa, but we still love them just the same. The love is unconditional. Nothing changes. Okay, nothing changes. A mother's love is also different in different seasons. 
there are seasons to the way how we we love our children um, and we turn our attention to our little ones you know and away from like our hobbies um, our interests and pursuits right that are that are probably going to be costly or we have to focus a lot on that attention a lot of times I would want to say I want to go away for for a while um, you know just go on a vacation just get away but you think about your little ones you know you don't want to leave your little ones um, for, for especially now with COVID and going across the seas or going away I'm a person that my, my husband can tell you right he's like baby you don't even want to leave them we can't even get away for a week because you don't even want to leave the kids I'm like they're too young to be left without mom they're just too young and he'll tell me all the time babe we have to be able to leave them like not now just wait till they're about you know 12 or so when they can take care of themselves and so prince got a long way to go right but you know sometimes and it's just the way a mother loves their children i just want to have them with me 24 7 if i can even when they are crawling up the back of my neck and just wanting to just get into everything, I still say, I just want to have them with me. It's like, I, it's, they bring me so much joy. And that is, you know, the love of a mother, especially with their babies. You know, my mom loves me now, but at least I'm old enough. So she's not like, okay, Sam, you need to come home. I need to see you here. You know, I'm married and I moved on. So, but if you don't hear from me in two days, she's going to call Sam, Samantha, are you Okay. And that's Eula. She's going to call. What, I didn't hear from you. Are you, are you. are you okay? Right? So that unconditional, unconditional love until the day you die, a mother's love is still the same. Okay? And um, a little bit about um, how we want to raise our children. A child should never feel as if they need, they, they need to earn a mother's love. They should never feel that way, okay? They should not, you should not have to tell them they have to do something or, or not even tell them. They shouldn't have that feeling of, um, I need to earn mommy's love, okay? Because if they do, it'll leave a void in their heart all their lives. If they feel like they have to always do something to get, gain that attention from mom, it'll be a void there. It will be a void in their life in their heart for as long as they can remember okay moms have to know we must love um love must be given unconditionally to establish that trust okay we have to give the love unconditionally so that they are able to trust us and they will be their emotional um state will be um set up on a good foundation if the love is withheld you know, a child will look for in a million other ways. And, and as mothers, we know that, you know, we try to raise them and train them in the right way. And sometimes we fall short. Let me not say that we're perfect, none, not at all. We fall short a lot of times um, because we too have, you know, stressors and things that we are dealing with. And we fall short a lot of times when we're trying to raise our children. But we also, um, we pick up the slack, you know, but there are many times that we don't, we need love ourselves. And if we're not getting the love that we need, whether it's from our own parents or our family and friends, our, our, our spouses, that also affect how we, you know, how we do what we're supposed to do when it comes to our children. It's a full circle thing. It's a full circle thing. It goes full circle everybody we all need each other to be able to have that stable good foundation so if if the love is withheld they will look for it all over the place okay and that is like a no-no for me we have to show love it has to be from mommy from daddy from everyone because if they don't re receive that they're going to search for it and they will search for a lifetime until they find it Okay, they will search a lifetime until they find it. And um, the emotional foundation we give our children at home is fundamental for their life. They need that because that's how they're going to learn how to love other people, right? That's how they're going to learn what's real love from what's fake love because we, are give, we as parents, we give that to them when we're raising them. 
we give that to them when in the in the time that we are raising them as well. And I want you to understand that a mother's love also is all about influence, the influence that we have on that child. We as mothers have an incredible opportunity to influence the next generation by what we do as a mother every day, how we, um, how we, we, what's the word I'm looking for? How we, we go about doing the things that um, will affect them growing up. And the things that we have to understand is that whatever we do, we have to be intentional about it. We have to be so intentional about how we take care of ourselves, okay? How we heal from our own life's hurts, right? So if, if when we are going through hurts, we complain and we, 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 we get upset about it and we don't try to say, okay, God, what should we do? Then our children, when they get hurt, when they're going through their things, they're going to do the same thing. But if we teach them from now, when something is bad, you go to God about it. I'm going to give you a little story. A long time ago, um, I remember my, my, my a friend's mom was praying to God. She was going through some things. She was praying to God. And her son, young son, heard her. And she kept saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She kept praying, talking to God, talking to God, and calling Jesus' name, calling Jesus' name. And... The son says, mommy, tell me what's wrong. Jesus hurt you? Did Jesus hurt you? If he, if he hurt you, tell me so I can beat him up. And the mom, you know, no, Jesus didn't hurt me, but I'm talking to Jesus because he can help me from what I'm going through. So even though I'm crying, it's Jesus that's going to help me to fix that. And every time I think about the story, I said, wow, if our children knows, and I'm sure that young man grew up now, and understand that Jesus is the only person he can go to when he's hurting. If he goes to him, he'll be able to fix whatever the situation is. So we wanna be intentional about our own healing from life's hurt. Be intentional about how we fix it, how we show it as well, how we allow our children to see our hurts as well. A movie I watched the other day, a mother kept was crying a lot and the daughter kept seeing it. And when she was able to fix her situation, the daughter said to her, Mommy, I'm happy because I won't have to see you cry anymore. I won't see you cry anymore. So we need to learn that our, our young ones are looking at us as mothers when we're going through our hurt, whatever it is that we're going through, we have to be able to control that so that we do not put that on them. Be intentional about how your healing process. Be so intentional about it. So you, so you do that in a way that your child can grow up, especially our little girls. They can grow up and, and, and be able to heal themselves from their hurt by doing the right steps. We want to take care of ourselves. We want to make sure that we be intentional about how we take care of ourselves. Put yourself together, right? Put on some clothes. Put some jewelry on. I'm a sassy girl for life and I'm sassied out tonight. So put some sassy jewelry on, put something on and be able to take care of yourself. Put on some outfit, get your nails done, get your feet done. Take care of yourself, do your hair. Take care of yourself because little girls are looking at those things. Okay, the young men, make sure that they are dressed to tea. You wanna make sure that you take care of yourself so that you know, your, your children will grow up and mimic what they see. Not what you tell them, but what they see, right? You want to invest in your marriages. For all the married ladies out there, please invest in your marriage. Take care of your husbands. Yes, baby, I know you're listening to this one, so let me turn up a little bit louder. <laughs> Take care of your husbands. Take care of your husbands because little girls are looking to see how mommy takes care of daddy. Little girls need to see that. So you want to take invest in your marriage and take care of your husband. Take care of your spouse's mothers. Take care of your spouses. Okay, and homemaking. The biggest one. Be intentional about homemaking. Cook. Clean. Crafty. One thing I know my daughter loves about me. Anything breaks in this house. Anything breaks, whether it's a toy uh, uh, anything that breaks or ruin or, or anything, she comes to me and say, mommy, she knows that I'm going to fix it. She just knows she's going to bring it to me and I'm going to fix it. A hair bow, a, a, a shirt, a, whatever it is, she knows she brings it to mommy. Mommy is going to fix it. So we want to be intentional about homemaking. Be intentional about that, mothers. Cook, clean, decorate. Make sure that we are 
decorating, change it out, change up the sheets and the color, the scheme, do some different things, especially with your little girls. You want to spend time with them and make sure that when you're decorating flowers, all these different things in my home, I do seasons. I change it out every season through different colors, different schemes. And sometimes it takes a lot of time, but my little girl knows mommy gets her crafting out. It's time to go to work. It's time. To, so you want to be, make sure that you're doing well with, you're being intentional with your homemaking. Okay. Because what we need to understand is that when we are intentional with those things, it increases the influence. Okay. And remember influence is something that God asks us influence is something that God asks us to be intentional about okay we want to be we want to influence them in a good positive way okay it's a mother's um it's a mother's love who keeps a mother who keeps loving their children throughout their entire life I'm not saying daddies don't do it but mothers go to their grave with their children's on their heart all the time and some mothers don't close their eyes unless they have spoken to their children or said her goodbye. And I've seen it forehand with my own two eyes. Some mothers will not close their eyes, even on their dying bed. They want to say, I'm, I'm looking for, for John, I'm looking for Mary. Did Sue call yet? I wanna talk to Sue, wanna talk to so-and-so. And after they have said something to those, to their children, they close their eyes. Being in the healthcare, being in the health field, I have seen that. Some mothers will wait to hear the voice. And I've seen a father do it as well. Okay. And so we carry that love throughout um, their life. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Now, um, in spite of the fact that there, that her role as a mother cha um, change is with time, her love and the care for their children remains the same all the time. It doesn't matter how the role changed, they may become a grandma, the love still stays the same, okay? A mother's love is nurturing, it's compassionate, and of course, above all, it's unconditional. It never ends, never, ever, ever ends. And one most, the most important thing that I can tell you about a mother's love is a mother that's a praying mother. And I know I have one of those mothers that's 4 a.m. in the morning, sometimes I'm sleeping and you can hear the prayers going up and she's calling everybody's name. She's calling everybody's name. She's calling the, 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 the children, the grandchildren, the nieces, the nephews. She's calling everybody. That's let me, let, man, let me tell you this, this right here, this right here is touching me. Cause I, ju I just, I can sit here and I'm remembering, I'm remembering those nights, those early mornings when she will sometimes wake us up out of our beds when we're sleeping and she will cover us. She will anoint us. She will anoint us. And sometimes we as children, we'll, mommy, why tonight? Why? I'm trying to sleep. I got to be in school in the morning, but I'm telling you today, if it wasn't for those prayers, if it wasn't for those prayers, those early morning, a lot of us would not would not be around, but it was because of our mother's prayers. And that's the love, because she could be sleeping four o'clock in the morning, she should be knocked out sleeping. She has work to go for a 12 hour shift, but she gets up at 4 a.m., 6 a.m., and she's praying, she's anointing, and not just one child, seven, eight children she's praying over when she could be sleeping because she knows what prayer does and because she loves us so much, she took the time to say, I'm going before the Lord on behalf of my children. And that's the best quality I tell you right now. Okay, that's one of the best qualities. I'm gonna give you a few more qualities and then um, I should be done shortly. Um, you wanna be a good role model because remember, we are the first person that our child knows. Okay, we are the first person, the first emotion, the first everything that our child will ever know. So we want to be a good role model. Set boundaries and rules as well. Do not allow your children to say that they are your best friends. They are not. They are not. Haley, don't try it. Do not try it. Don't do it. Telling you from now, this, this video is being recorded um, May 6th. Today's the 6th. Yep, May 6th. Do not try it. I will not be your best friend, honey. I am your mother and mommy will, what mommy says my goes. Okay, so when you watch this a few 
years from now, you're going to remember I said it. I'm not going to be your best friend. So we de we're going to set some boundaries and we're going to set some rules. Okay, because you need that to thrive. If you don't have boundaries and rules, you'll walk all over mommy and that's not going to happen. And in the same breath, boundaries and rules are set. We're not best friends, but we need to respect each other. I'll be respectful to you when you get older. Okay, because respect has to go two ways. And then another good quality of a good mother is supporting and loving. So if you say you want to be a doctor, Haley, no problem. Be a doctor, honey. Even though mommy wants you to be a singer, whatever it is, right? You be whatever you want to be. I'll support you. I will not put my um, expectation on you. I would allow you to choose what it is that you want to do. Okay, so you want to be supportive. That's another good quality. And be patient. Oh my gosh, be patient. We don't have to push them to be, to get to where they, you know, where we want them to get. Be patient. It's going to take a lot of time, but we have to be patient. We have to be patient. Okay, and I said this already. The most importantly is to pray. Is a praying mother. That's the best quality, is a praying mother. The scripture says you want to honor, honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And if we are honoring our mothers, and we are doing what the Bible tells us to do, right? We're doing exactly what the Bible tells us to do. Then everything, all these calls and things we will be able to, because we are, all of us came from a mother. All of us came from somewhere. We did not just, you know, I didn't become a mother on my own. I have a mother that I had to be able to be obedient to, to be able to have some good qualities to instill in my child, okay? And, one thing when I was researching this, I had I could not forget because I have some aunts that have not birthed any children. And there are a lot of mothers that I know that that, that did not go through the stage of pregnancy, was not able to, to bring forth a child through that avenue, but have mothered, have nurtured so many children. Okay, that, that's Prince. Have nurtured so many children, have mothered so many kids, and I want to say thumbs up to you guys as well, even though you have not gone through the process of childbearing, but you have took care of so many, right? You have mothered some, you have adopted, a lot of you have adopted, and for the ones that haven't, you have mothered children that may, may not be in your home, but you have prayed for them. You have blessed them financially, or you know you have opened up doors, you have allowed things to happen for them in their lives, so... Um, their their mothers their good qualities of mothers like that as well okay and i remember the, the moses moses mother had to give her away but um he was put in a basket and the king's daughter took her took took him in and raised him as his own and that wasn't that, but that that was a mother's love. She she just knew that I'm not gonna leave a baby out here, wherever the baby come from. And she took him in and took care of that baby as is as her own. So to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day! Happy, 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 happy Mother's Day! I wish you a happy Mother's Day, and um, I know that your children will do something lovely for you. And if not, I am telling you Happy Mother's Day, and I hope that this. Um, this video will inspire you, will motivate you, will help you feel loved and appreciated and knowing that you are, you were created with the utmost, um, God puts so much care into you. There's so many things that mothers do that I have to say thumbs up because I am one of them and I'm giving props to my mother as well because she's the most strong, dedicated, loving, caring Mother, I know there is no one else like her, and I'm going to say it because that's just my mom. She took me from nothing to something, and I want to just give this shout out to my mother, Yuli Lewis. When you watch this, I love you dearly. Love you, love you, love you, love you dearly. And to all the other mothers, I just wish you guys happy, happy Mother's Day. Now, as promised, I'm going to, let's see. We're gonna give you some other inspirational products that you can use as well, that you can use daily to motivate and encourage you as well, right? So we all need daily inspiration to motivate and to build our 
um, our confidence. And IBSM is dedicated to providing this for you in their products. And an additional product to the affirmation jar we talked about earlier is the inspirational jar. And this jar is filled with inspirational quotes, scriptures, um, quotes and scriptures, okay? So I'm gonna leave one with you tonight. And tonight's inspiration is, and we're just gonna go in and take one out like we did for the affirmation, okay? And here comes a little guy. And I'm just gonna read it to you. Okay. And tonight's inspiration says, um, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So, and that is Psalms 139, 23 to 24. It says, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked ways in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I'll leave that with you tonight that you will allow the Lord to search you and to know your heart as well. And um, if there's anything that you would have to go to him for, that's on you. But Psalms 139, 23 to 24, check that out. And you can meditate on that for the week. Okay, and you can find these jars, both of them. I do have another jar called the Blessings Jar. You can find these on my website, and the link is pinned in my description below. And I just want to thank you all again for checking this video out. Thank you for watching, and do not forget to leave an inspiration in the comment section below for a list of topics you would like me to talk about. and motivational videos and hit that notification bell so you won't be notified when i upload another video okay and for more drip please check out my other videos listed on the screen and if you cannot do 